making a Stuart model steam plant part 60. Fitting the stainless steel cap screws to hold the boiler clamps in place and fixing a problem caused by using a blunt drill bit. Then cutting mahogany strips and some painting. Yesterday I uploaded part 61 of this series. Why didn't I upload part 60? Well it's quite simple. On the day when I was assembling the clips for part 60, my hard disk drive went wrong. I had to very quickly buy a new one and it took quite a while to transfer all the data. And I forgot all about part 60, I never voiced over it. But now, having seen the error of my ways, here it is. This clip shows the construction of the baseboard. It's a substantial piece of 18mm plywood with some mahogany planks stuck on the top. Because of the good quality plywood with the mahogany planks on the top, this can be drilled and threaded to accept bolts. I removed the temporary 4BA brass hexagon bolts and I'm replacing them with M4 Allen caphead bolts. The M4 bolts fit perfectly through the brass brackets, but they don't fit through the washers I soldered underneath. I drilled these clearance size for 4BA, which is too small for M4. And here I am on the drilling machine, wondering why the part is getting warm as I'm just drilling through the washer. No problem here, the drill went through OK, first at one end and then the other. By now though, the piece of brass was quite warm, so I knew the drill was blunt. I re-tapped the holes in the baseboard M4, and here with the help of an Allen key, I'm having a test fit. This is not a permanent fixing for the boiler. I didn't tighten the bolts all the way in, because I'm only going to have to remove them. There's a lot of work yet to do on the baseboard. This will be OK for now. Time to look at the clamp on the other end of the boiler. This clamp is not quite as wide, it's cut to fit in the gap between the boiler mounting. The first hole enlarged without any problem, but the last one was a big problem. It melted the solder and the washer dropped off. With a bit of help from my very small and very useful Proxon blowtorch, I re-soldered the washer in place. I didn't put the piece of brass on any heat-resistant material, I sat it straight on the bench. And guess what? The bench started to burn. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Because this bench is full of oil because I run steam engines on it, and in no time at all, it was well on the way to cremation. It doesn't matter, this is a very rough work surface on the bench, and it's ready for refacing anyway. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to set fire to your bench. Using a cloth, I cleaned off the black carbon deposit, and it wasn't really badly damaged. It was, however, quite hot. I re-threaded the holes M5 at this end of the boiler, and tried the bolts in place, and they were both OK. I had a look through my old box of mahogany, and I found this piece of sheet. It's a bit grubby, a bit dirty, and possibly not the one I'm going to use, so I thought I would try out the blade guides on my new bandsaw, and they worked OK. The only problem is, this blade is incredibly blunt and bent and damaged, and it wandered about a bit, which is not what I needed it to do. Also, this particular piece of mahogany, which was the only piece of sheet of this size that I had, wasn't long enough for the front and rear of the baseboard, only for the sides. Oddly enough, the first cut was OK, but on the second one, the blade really wandered about. I was a bit puzzled by this, but then I realised that the blade was so blunt, it's a wonder it was cutting anyway. Health and safety warning, be very careful when using bandsaws and always keep your fingers away from the blade. This movement that I'm making with my left hand helps to hold the piece of mahogany tightly up against the cutting guide. At this point, I decided not to use this mahogany because it was stained anyway. You can see that these two pieces did fit OK, but I think I'm going to buy some more mahogany. Here I'm taking a measurement, and later on the same day I ordered a pack from eBay. And now it's painting time. I'm in the outer part of the workshop. I've rubbed down the mounting plinth for the double ten engine, and here I'm giving the mounting plinth another coat of HMG Paints Gloss Black. Generally speaking, whenever you see me painting, I always mount the part on top of something that I can move. And in this case, conveniently, it's an aerosol cap lid. This is a second coat of possibly three or four coats, and here, as a special treat, is a shot of the paint drying. 
This coat of paint looks very thick, but as the paint dries, it smooths out. I left this on screen for a while so certain viewers can watch the paint dry. And that concludes the missing part 60 of the series. I really can't do much else in the workshop until this paint dries. I'll just say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.